Folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today we're going to look at the murder of Senior Officer Specialist Eric Williams, United States Prison, Cana, Waymark, Pennsylvania. Officer Williams was 34 years old. He'd been with the Federal Bureau of Prisons for about 18 months. My understanding is he'd done all his time there at the prison in Cana. Now, he wasn't married, but he had a, had a pretty big family. Now, his death is going to lead to a bill that was passed in Congress and signed by the President that allowed federal prison guards to carry pepper spray inside the unit of all maximum security prisons controlled by the federal government. As always, you have to wait till somebody dies before you do something. That would just make sense. Now, the fellow that uh, is going to be in the center of all this, he's about as bad as they come and worse. In fact, what he did to Officer Williams is its so disgusting that... Uh, I had to read the material several times to make sure I was actually understanding what it was saying. Now this fella, he had been sentenced to life for a 2002 gang-related murder in Arizona. Now he'd gotten an 11-year sentence in the federal system for cocaine trafficking. My understanding that was the sentence that he was serving at the time of this event. But now he had he had went to prison for auto theft. He'd gotten nailed for being in a conspiracy to murder a police officer that was stopped before it got started. He'd stabbed an inmate while he'd been in prison, beat another one with a metal food tray, and had threatened to kill guards. It's February 25th. 2013. Earlier that day, or maybe the day before, Officer Williams had ordered this inmate have his cell checked. I don't know what all's involved in pulling an inmate out and checking his cell, but allegedly that's what's going to start this ghastly event. Now, Officer Williams, he's walking up a flight of stairs going from what I understand to be the ground floor to the second floor of the cell block he's working. Now, all he's got with him are his keys, a set of handcuffs, and a radio with a panic button. That's it. Now, at the time Officer Williams is walking up those stairs, there's over 100 inmates out of their cells. So this inmate, he's kind of upset because the the officers tossed his cell. Now when Officer Williams is getting to the top of the stairs, the inmate, who's at the top, leaning against the table, he walks over and he kicks Officer Williams. And of course, being kicked, Officer Williams fell back down the stairs. Now in this video that the jury saw, shows Officer Williams getting up and trying to run away. And the inmate jumps on him, knocks him down. Now this attack is going to go on for so long that the inmate actually has to stop and take breaks. At one time during this, 
act. The inmate stops what he's doing, puts his foot on a table, and sips a drink that another inmate had handed him because the inmate's tired and thirsty from killing Officer Williams. Now also this inmate had two shanks. So he kicked and beat and stabbed and punched and stomped Officer Williams. Officer Williams was stabbed 203 times. I didn't stutter when I said that. He was stabbed 203 times. He was kicked 11 times and stomped 6 times to his head and his neck and his face and his body. Now, I don't know how long it took for somebody to come find Officer Williams. Somebody got on the radio. I don't know if it was him Maybe also Williams got on there before he was out of action. Now, the officers that finally got to the cell block described Officer Williams' body as mutilated and unrecognizable. The first officer to find him said, I couldn't even recognize his face. And of course, the officers that get there, they have to get all the inmates back into their cells and they have to lock down the block. And then they got to figure out who committed the act. The government's case was the video and then the officers who got to the cell block. And every one of them said that Officer Williams was unrecognizable. Now, obviously, the government asked for the death penalty on this case. This inmate was charged in U.S. District Court in the Middle District of Pennsylvania with one count of first-degree murder. One count of first-degree murder of a U.S. corrections officer. One count of possessing contraband in a prison. Now, this jury of eight women and four men, they saw that video and they heard the testimony. Now, on June 8th, 2017, that jury found the inmate guilty on all charges. Now, unfortunately, during the penalty phase, the jury could not reach a decision on whether the inmate should be sentenced to death. I'm no longer a big advocate of the death penalty, how it's presently being Administer. Now, the federal government executes people a little bit faster. But if there was ever anyone that needed to be sentenced to death, it's this fella here. The jury found him guilty. They didn't have a problem with that. But they couldn't decide that this man deserved to die, which is shocking beyond belief. Because this is a classic case of a man that has nothing to lose. He can continue to go on and kill. So he was given a life sentence in the federal prison. And unless they get him moved to a prison where he's on lockdown 23 hours a day, if he's around any guards, he's certainly a threat to do it again. What are they going to do to him? And what did this jury... What message did they pass along to inmates in prisons? You can kill a guard. You can kill a human being. You're just going to get more time in prison. Well, they're already in prison. This case is just it's beyond belief that someone could inflict this much damage to another person. I could not be an officer working in a correctional institute. There is no way. Now, the resource material didn't didn't state how long this attack went on, and I just keep going back to that, that it, it's going on so long and it's so ferocious, this inmates have to take breaks in between mutilating this officer. 
Folks, if there was ever a smoking gun case for immediate execution, this would be it. Now, according to this Correctional Officers Protection Act, that's named for Officer Williams, officers can carry pepper spray, but there's a lot of people that pepper spray won't work on, and I don't know if it would have made a difference here or not. Senior Officer Specialist Eric Williams End of Watch February 25th 2013